Hi, welcome to another video then in my series on polar coordinates. And what we've got here is a quick video where you've got to convert the polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And I've got three examples here, two are in radians and the third one is in degrees. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. As usual, come back when ready and you can check your work solutions with mine. Okay, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, the first one is the point P with polar coordinates 5 and 2 pi over 3. And to convert this to Cartesian coordinates, what I'd want to do is just sketch a graph, okay? So we have something like this, where we got our x-axis and y-axis. And we have a polar coordinate P, which is five units from the origin, and the angle is two pi over three radians. So it's going to look something like this, okay, if we put that out there, this length is going to be 5 units, and the angle in here, starting from the initial line, turning in an anti-clockwise sense, because it's positive, is going to be 2 pi over 3, okay, 2 pi over 3 radians. That means that this angle in here, this acute angle will be pi upon 3 radians. And what I'm going to need to work out then is the lengths of these two lines here. This is the point P, just on the end, like so. Now if I label these two lengths here, let's say we label this one A and this length here B, then to get A by trigonometry, a is going to be equal to 5 times the cosine of pi by 3 radians, okay? 5 multiplied by cos pi upon 3. And the cos of pi upon 3 is a half. Check it out in your on your calculator. You've got to be in radians mode. It's a standard result though. It's a half. So that's going to give you 5 times a half, which is 2.5 or 5 over 2. And for the length B, what we've got is that B equals 5 times the sine of pi upon 3 radians. And sine of pi upon 3 is root 3 over 2, so that gives you 5 root 3 over 2 units. So I'm always working off this acute angle here so that these lengths are always going to be positive lengths. And then I can see that that point P, if we express it in Cartesian coordinates, well, it's got to be negative A, so that's going to be minus 5 over 2. And for the Y coordinate, will that be positive B, so that would be 5 root 3 over 2. Okay? So essentially, that's how I would approach a problem like this. Now we've got another two here that at this point you might like to try. This one is P has polar coordinates 8 and then minus pi upon 6 radians. And then I chose this one just to work with degrees, 10, 250 degrees. Okay, so let's see how you got on with those then if you had a go. So again we just section this off down through here. Now for this second one, let's just draw, again, a diagram. I'd always encourage you to draw a diagram because uh, I feel it helps just to get an idea on the position for starters anyway. So we've got P is 8 units from the origin and I've got here minus pi upon 6 radians. So what we're going to have is that a negative angle, remember, is turning in a clockwise sense. So that's going to be down here, all right? So that's going to be 8 units from the origin, and minus pi upon 6 is going to be this angle in here. Now I'm going to only just mark the positive 
value pi upon 6 but remember it does turn in that clockwise sense. So I create a triangle okay like so always projecting back onto the x-axis okay and we'll label this distance A and this distance B and we've got our point P at the end here. So to work out its Cartesian coordinates I've got to get A and I've got to get B. Now for A, A will be equal to 8 times the cosine of the angle which is pi upon 6 radians and the cosine of pi upon 6 is root 3 upon 2. So that's going to be 8 times root 3 upon 2 which is going to give you 4 root 3. And for B, well B is going to be equal to 8 multiplied by the sine of pi upon 6 radians. And the sine of pi upon 6 is going to be a half, 8 times half is going to be 4. So when it comes to giving the Cartesian coordinates of P, we've therefore got P is going to be 4 root 3, positive sentence there, 4 root 3 in the x direction, but for the y direction it's going to be negative 4, so we've got minus 4 there. Okay, so uh, that's that one. And lastly, we've got this one here, P with polar coordinates 10, 250 degrees. So again, just drawing a sketch here. Okay, we have our y-axis and x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. And 250 degrees is going to take us from here into essentially the third quadrant. So I'm going to have 10 units from the origin something like that. Okay, mark that in as 10. And this angle round here is going to be 250 degrees. Remember, turning in a positive sense, okay, is anti-clockwise. So if I complete the triangle for this, we go from here up to there, onto the x-axis like so. I'll label that A, that B, and then I'm working with the acute angle in here. And this angle in here is going to be 70 degrees, okay? So just mark that in the 70, try and find some room. Let's just put it there, okay? 70 degrees. So again, to get the coordinates of P, we just need to work out what A and B are. So for A, A is going to be equal to 10 cosine 70 degrees. So A equals 10 multiplied by the cosine of 70 degrees. And if you work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 3.42 and so on. As for B, B is going to be equal to 10 times the sine of 70 degrees. So 10 times the sine of 70 degrees. And if you work that one out on your calculator, you'll find you get 9.39 and so on. So therefore, for the Cartesian coordinates of P, it's going to be minus A and minus B. So if we give these answers to one decimal place, we're going to have minus 3.4 and then minus 9.4. And I'll just put here to 1 dP. Okay, one decimal place. So I hope that's giving you an idea then on how we can go about converting polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates.